How's it going everyone? Welcome to this week's Q&A. So like any other week, if you want a chance to win your questions being answered, make sure you drop a comment down below and I'll try to get to each and every question. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started with the first question of the week. And it is, do we see issues with batteries getting dirty over time in the hybrid system from a lack of a filter like some other vehicles have, for example, like Toyota. So Honda does not use a filter to uh, you know, clean out some of that air coming into the uh, hybrid battery to you know keep things cool and th uh, things of that nature. So uh, although we don't see any issues with that, uh, we don't see too many failures at all with the hybrid systems, uh, specifically more so with the uh, stuff, including the battery and some of the components back there, or whether it be underneath the seat or in the trunk area of those vehicles. So um, I think a filter would be a good idea, but it's possible that that would restrict some airflow it potentially uh, caused some restrictions there and something Honda maybe had implemented at first and then uh, later on removed. I'm not sure if Toyota, you know, maybe uses a stronger fan or some sort of a motor or something like that, or just something that Honda just said, we don't need it, we're not gonna do it. Again, uh, we don't see too many failures. I probably replaced uh, in the earlier generations. Yes, we did a whole bunch of battery packs, uh, but as of late, uh, we haven't done uh, too many at all of these battery packs, not that they don't fail, but we do not do them at a high rate like we used to back in the day. Uh, I can't remember the last time I did one without being, again, for that first or second generation hybrids in their, you know, the earlier years that we had. So uh, I think it would be a good idea, but Honda obviously did not put one there uh, for whatever reason they may have. So, and again, we don't see too many uh, failures of these. So it doesn't seem like whatever dust or dirt or debris may be getting in there is actually causing any harm. So I hope it answers the question for you. Okay, so next question is, what are some tips uh, to uh, do when cleaning off some Honda Bond or Ultra Flange, for example, on a oil pan when removing it and replacing it, let's say for like an oil pump reseal or a timing cover when uh, you, you know go ahead and do a timing chain or whatever you needed to do, maybe you needed to uh, replace a head gasket. So what are some things you should do and some things you shouldn't do to clean those surfaces? So number one thing what you shouldn't do is use anything that is high speed motor like a, a angle grinder or anything like that with some sort of a pad attached to it. That's way too much RPM and it's possible that you take off so much material that you're gonna have a big void there and cause a leak. So uh, I, a lot of guys do use that. Some guys use like a plastic scraper, which is fine. Although oftentimes that does not clean it thoroughly and leave some old Honda Bond or Ultra Flange behind. So what I personally like to use is one of these Scotch Bright pads. Now these are uh, very easily accessible. And what I do is I tear off a piece and I clean off as I need. Does it take more time? Absolutely. But it comes out looking absolutely brand new and it guarantees you not only you didn't do a uh, job where you may have caused a void because this is not very abrasive at all, but it also guarantees that when you apply the new Honda Bond or Ultra Flange that you're going to have a nice and clean contact area so it could you know, adhere and ad adhese uh, as much as possible without causing any leaks. And again, uh, you don't wanna use anything high speed because oftentimes I've seen it at my job, I've seen it at other places coming into my job where guys usually clean it off with some sort of a 90 degree uh, grinder of some sort. Um, obviously they're not using a cutting wheel, they're using something less abrasive, but more abrasive than this. And again, a lot of RPM. So that stuff, a little bit of a misstep and you know you could go ahead and cause yourself a ton of damage. And if you're lucky, it was on whatever component you removed to put back. If you happen to, let's say damage the block or damage the head where you have a void now where you're case or uh, you know oil pan no longer meets there and you have a little bit of a void then you're going to cause yourself a ton a ton of headaches and added expenses that you don't need to be dealing with so additionally anytime you go ahead and remove anything of that nature um, you're going to want to put some Honda Bond anytime there's two uh, surfaces that meet so when I replace a head or a head gasket underneath the, the, um, the head gasket itself and on top of the head gasket where the, the block and the head uh, meet, I'll put a little bit of Honda Bond there. And what that ensures is that there's no mist gap or anything where some oil could you know, seep out just a little bit. Again, it's a small attention to details like that that make a huge difference. And when you're doing like, let's say a valve cover gasket. Now, most of them will come out very easily if you're doing an older vehicle where it's 10, 15, 20 years old. 
it's going to be plastic and real hard to come out of a valve cover itself. So at that time, I take just like a flathead or something sharp and cut around it, clean away nicely, just make sure there's no high spots or anything. And again, I don't use any power tools. And when putting it back, any gasket, anywhere where there's two metals that meet together or a sharp corner, I go ahead and place some Hanum on there just to ensure that there's no leakage going on there because the gasket may not sit there 100% uh, correctly and just a little bit of Honda bond, just a little bit, you don't need a ton of it, just to make sure it fills up any gaps that the valve cover gasket may not. So hopefully that's the question for you. Okay, so the next question is, is Honda and Acura actively doing anything to prevent the theft of their vehicles and some of their components? And the simple answer is no. So at the end of the day, they are not addressing anything in that. And if you've been following lately, some of Honda's and Acura's vehicle thefts are absolutely through the roof. For example, my TLX Type S and even the A-Spec models, not so much the other models, but those two in specific trims uh, have a super high uh, rate of theft where insurance companies are actually raising you know, premiums on those specific vehicles. Now, as you can see, I parked mine in a garage already because of some of these earlier thefts that I heard way back like two and a half years ago. And the first case I actually heard was up in Canada, but surely enough, it trickled down all the way to here. And again, this is hot spots. This isn't all over the country, but mainly if you live next to a bigger city, that's where a lot of the crime is, unfortunately. So um, as far as that goes, uh, you know, there's just an immobilizer system. It's super easy with a generic tool, easier than an actually Honda scan tool to uh, program a new key to it. It's way too easy, far too easy. I could do it in probably under a minute, minute and a half tops, and with a, a key not being programmed at all. Again, of course, you have to get into the car first, which is, again, super easy. So there is stuff that you could do. I made a full video on this, uh, just kind of addressing that. As far as other components, things stolen uh, along the lines of airbags, uh, driver's side airbags, they pop out in like 10 seconds on some of these. They're just spring-loaded, pop the springs, and it pops right out. Then they cut the harness. They're not there to play games. They're in and out couple of minutes uh, at a worst case scenario. Uh, catalytic converters was a big thing, uh, you know, maybe like a decade ago. Uh, as these cars, uh, you know, age and designs got different stuff like that, the catalytic converters now, 99 out of 100 of them are bolted onto the head. So it makes it a lot more difficult. I had seen one case where they popped the hood and they saws all the cat off of a Civic. Uh, most cases, you're not gonna be doing that because there's not enough space. On that particular car, there was. The easiest things and the most common things I'm seeing nowadays is actually radar thefts, which I've talked about a ton here. There's plenty of brackets there for the high theft rate ones. Not all of them are targeted. For example, the TLX is one of them. They just take the whole car, not the radar on those. Uh, they don't really mess with the previous generation pilots, although the current generation pilots, it is a high uh, target uh, item, uh, along with the, the current Accords, the previous generation Accords, um, the previous and uh, current generation uh, CRV, and uh, from what I could tell, the passports are going to be right in line with that as the radar is right in front of the bumper support. I think it's a horrible idea, a horrible design. Um, so any small fender bender, those are going to get uh, damaged. And again, these are going to be items that are uh, very expensive. So obviously, it's easy to just go take someone else's versus having to pay somebody a dealership for a new one. So uh, those are probably the number one thing right now. Uh, wheels are another big item, so there's things you could do, you know, wheel locks of all sorts. I've seen people put five different wheel locks on each wheel. Uh, as a service guy, that makes it super frustrating for me, but you have to do what you have to do. Um, and last but not least, a lot of mirror glasses, they steal those. And what's sad about those is you not only damage the mirror glass sometimes because they crack real easy, but you actually break the motor on the mirror. Uh, sometimes it's sold separately, sometimes it's not. So uh, they do sell a mirror protector, a mirror glass protectors as well on Amazon. So something you may want to look into if you live in a uh, area where this is an issue. Uh, just do your research. If your area is in the news, uh, I promise you they're after your Honda or your Acura wheels, radars, uh, mirror glasses, airbags, or sometimes the whole car. So, and Honda has done a little to nothing to, you know, help these people and, and trying to avoid some of these thefts. Again, uh, you can only always uh, slow a thief down so much before they figure out another way or get more desperate or move on to the next person. But the idea is to make it inconvenient enough to where they don't want to target your car and they want to target somebody else's. You know, unfortunately, somebody's going to be the target. Just uh, try to make it not be you. So hopefully answers the question for you. So the next question is, when getting uh, some sort of warranty work done, 
or a uh, warranty extension or a recall and you have an accessory that is in the way of that recall or warranty job or repair, do you need to remove those before going to the dealer? And well, that really depends on the situation. Now, if you have a uh, bumper bar or a bully, some sort of bumper bully, and you're getting the AC condenser uh, replaced under the extended warranty, now there goes an argument saying, well, uh, Honda's not going to pay for us to remove that additional work, so they may try to charge you. And a customer may go ahead and say, well, I may never have to remove it if Honda didn't make a defective product. So that really depends on the situation there in that case of a warranty extension. That's between you and your dealership. Your dealership may charge you extra to uh, remove a set item, whether it be a bumper bar, bumper bully, whatever you call it, uh, some sort of protective stuff there. Um, and again, that's between you and your dealer, so that's for you guys to discuss. If your dealer tries to charge you, what you could do is remove it yourself, get the job done, and then put it back in yourself. Again, not convenient, but it just it is what it is. In the case of, let's say, some warranty work or a uh, you know some sort of recall again uh, it really depends on a situation here let's say you needed a wheel bearing and you have some aftermarket wheel spacers now a lot of times those wheel spacers are not torqued on there correctly and when you go to remove them they end up stripping the nuts so again not Honda's fault that you put there not the technician's fault that you put those there but it's also not your fault that the product fell now one can argue that uh, the wheel spacer brought out the wheel a little bit, put more pressure on the bearing, and that's what caused the damage. At that point, they probably won't even be covering uh, the bearing either. So it really depends, again, uh, case by case situation on a deal. So this question was brought up by actually a tonneau cover on a ridge line for the uh, rear tailgate harness. So uh, in that case, if it doesn't affect the tailgate where it doesn't have any latching points or anything like that, that's all we have to remove is the actual top cover and the back cover of that tailgate. So if it just has uh, you know, hooks on the side of it and doesn't lock into the tailgate at all where you added something, uh, you know, it's not a big deal. We really don't have to touch the tonneau cover at all and it shouldn't be a big deal. But again, uh, case by case situation here and it really depends on the design. Um, and some dealers, if it's something quick, let's say we were doing a head gasket, you know, and it just fell into, under normal warranty and you happen to have some sort of accessory on there, uh, maybe a, an alarm of some sort where it kills ignition, we just have to plug the, the, you know, the wire or you had a strut brace and we have to remove the strut brace. That's not a big deal. It's going to take us two, three minutes and your dealer is trying to be charging you for that. In my opinion, I won't even ask for time for something like that. But if you have something wired into eight different wires and you're replacing an engine bay harness, in that case, A, that might have avoided your warranty to begin with and B, uh, we might ask for extra time to go ahead and replace that along with something uh, of a remote start, a tracking device, if we had to do an under dash harness. Uh, and again, it might not even be covered and if it is covered, they might ask for time because that's additional work that we have to do that Honda or Acura will not pay us to do. So it really depends on the situation here. If you have a specific question, uh, drop a comment down below. Uh, you know, maybe email me with some pictures or whatnot. I think that's a little bit complicated. And uh, I'll try to answer as best as possible. But again, uh, some dealers, some technicians may be a little bit more lenient, a little bit more willing to just uh, turn a cheek and just do it. Others may want to charge you for every little thing. So it really depends on that particular dealer, that particular technician and the situation. So hopefully that answers this question for you. And last but not least, question of the week. And once again, if you want a chance to wait questions being answered, make sure you drop a comment down below. And the question is, what is some possible things to look out for if you have a pulling while accelerating and or braking? So that could be a couple of different things. Uh, some things that come to mind is immediately something loose in the suspension that when you accelerate or you decelerate or hit the brakes, it's just changing the angle, the alignment of that uh, component, uh, whether it be like a low control arm, maybe a strut or something like that, causing it to you know shift and change the angle of the alignment, along with worn suspension item. So worn suspension item is going to give you the same effect as something loose. So that's going to, again, when you're accelerating or braking, potentially uh, change the angle of that wheel and tire and just cause the car to go either left or right or something along those lines. That's something that we were going to see uh, more common and more times often than not uh, for this particular concern. Another thing that can happen is a sticking caliper potentially. So if you're accelerating and let's say the right front caliper is sticking, it's going to cause more drag on that wheel. So it's going to want to pull to the right side 
of the vehicle. So uh, again, if you decelerate, it's still going to be clamped on there and it's still con gonna continue to pull to the same side at that point, to the point where eventually it seizes and it's going to be real hard to uh, drive and accelerate. Uh, before that, you'll probably get some crazy wobble just from that brake pad overheating and just getting hot spots on that rotor and causing some a uh, wobble but i have seen that multiple times it could also be a back caliper although that wouldn't really cause so much of a pull as a front one would but uh, when we see a front one typically that's really what we see and the wheel will be hotter than the other side obviously and there's other things to look out for but mainly we're going to be focusing on a uh, loose or worn suspension items for that and it's typically going to pull one way when you accelerate then kind of center when you decelerate or vice versa when you hit the brakes or let go of the brakes. And there may or may not be some noises associated with that. Obviously, if it's something real loose, there's gonna be some clunking. It's something pretty evident of that. But uh, get your cars thoroughly inspected, thoroughly checked, uh, you know, every three to 5,000 miles when you do your oil changes and like that. You could foresee a lot of these things happen before they happen. Bushings are going to crack before they break and things are gonna be worn before they completely wore out, you know, nine out of 10 times. Uh, that's going to be the situation, unless if it's something you can't see, like a dried out ball joint, but typically that will have some sort of a sound and uh, you know, it, you'll know you be notified in a different way uh, from the vehicle just kind of speaking to you, uh, you know, in that situation. So hopefully that answers the question for you and I'll catch everyone on the next one.